was the best acting business decision that you made. So whether that be representation wise. Firing everybody after Cookie. Everybody had to go. Where is my deal? Where is my commercial? Cookie was top of the fashion game. Where is my endorsement? What did you have set up for after this? That's why y'all haven't seen me in so long. They had nothing set up. All they wanted was another cookie show. And I said, I'll, I'll do it, but it has to be right. The, perp the people deserve She's too beloved for y'all to f*** it up. And so when they didn't get it right, I was like, well, that's it. And then they had nothing else. You're all f***ing fired. <laughs> was the best. <clears throat> Let me read the headline before I get started. 50 Cent shares his interest in wanting to work with Taraji P. Henson after she spoke about previously firing her team for not maximizing on her cookie lion success. Um, if you recall, 50 Cent was the one. Who, let me just, let, let, I'm moving ahead. I'm putting the car before the horse. Let me. Let me get into <clears throat> my diatribe first. Welcome back to the channel. Everybody that was mad about my last video featuring the ungratefulness of Taraji P. Henson and other black female uh, actresses in Hollywood, for everybody that was mad or downvoted that video, get ready to be mad again. <laughs> because I'm not done. I'm going to show you the hypocrisy of black culture, and more specifically, black women. Y'all were mad at me and left uh, comments talking about how I was wrong for putting down Taraji, another black woman, and shame on me for not supporting her and her struggles and plights as a millionaire worth $25 million. Shame on me for not feeling sorry uh, and buying into the tears of a woman who has been able to purchase a $6.4 million home and drive around a collection of luxury cars while living in one of the richest rural areas of uh, multiple cities. But the thing about them tables, the thing about them tables is that they have a, they have a habit of eventually turning. And when they turn, that same energy is somehow never the same. But I'm gonna bring every single one of you to the front of the class so that you can explain why the energy wasn't the same when another black woman had an issue with being underpaid in Hollywood. Now, Derek, what are you talking about? Well, let's get to it. Many of you already know this actress that I'm about to bring up on the screen. But for those of you living under a rock, I'll make it plain so that once again, we're all on the same page. This is Monique Angela Hicks. Many of you may recognize her from the sitcom, The Parkers, or you may recognize her from the movie, Precious, where she played the controversial character, Mary Lee Johnson. Now, stay with me because I'm gonna connect all of the dots, I promise you. Now, the interesting thing about that movie, Precious, is that it had a budget of only $10 million, yet it was able to gross over $63 million at the box office. So it earned literally six times what it cost to produce it. It also, earned six nominations at the Academy Awards in which Monique actually won an Oscar for. But beyond all of that, right, beyond all those facts, the even more interesting fact is that Monique went viral after the success of that film and after she won an Oscar for her performance in that film because she popped up on the media radar criticizing the lead director of that movie, Lee Daniels. Many of you remember it, but for those that don't, let us take a time machine back a couple years so that we can all get caught up and refresh everyone's memory on exactly what happened. You know, the phone was ringing and the scripts were coming. And when people say, Monique, where have you been? 
It's not that I haven't been on TV or been in the movies because I've been blackballed, as Mr. Mc, as Mr. Daniels has said. The offers just didn't make sense, Don. So again, the phones didn't stop ringing and the scripts didn't stop coming, but the offers that were associated with them were offers that made me say, guys, I can't accept that. Mm -hmm. Because if I accept that and I won the award, what are my sisters being offered that didn't win the award or wasn't nominated? And what does it say to the little girl who's not here yet that yeah. if we continue to accept, accept these low offers, however do we make it different and make a change? Okay, I want, I want to play this. Uh, this was Lee Daniels on this very broadcast last night. Let's listen. Okay. We were on the campaign and she was making unreasonable demands. And, uh, you know, and, I, and she wasn't thinking, this is when reverse racism, I think, happens. You know, I said, you, you have to think the producers of the film, you have to think the studio. And, uh, and I think she didn't understand that. And, and I think that, uh, and I said, listen, people aren't going to respond well if you don't, if you don't. So I love her and, I, and I've, I've spoken to her and, I, and I, she's brilliant. She's, I, and I like working with brilliant people. But sometimes artists get in their own way. I think that um, there were demands that were made from her uh, on the Precious campaign that everyone knows about that, uh, that hurt her. And, and I told her that. Can she change that? I mean, if she plays ball, you yeah. got to play ball. That's this what, is that not, was the this question is, this I is, to ask you me. have to, this is, a, this is not just show. It's show business. And you've got to play ball. What's your reaction, Monique? You didn't play the game. <laughs> you, were, you had difficult well, demands. I want to address it for the order that it went in. And when Mr. Daniels say I had these demands, it shocked me because I was saying to the screen, Don, please ask him what the demands were. Mm -hmm. And actually, there were no demands. There was a request from the movie studio, and they called and requested that I fly to France for the Cannes Film Festival. I simply said I respectfully declined. Because if you can remember at the time, there was a talk show called The Monique Show. I was doing a comedy tour. I was actually in the award season of the awards. And I'm also a wife and I'm a mommy. So when they called, I had a couple days just downtime. I wanted to spend that with my husband and my kids. So when we said we respectfully declined, the movie studio called back again. And they said, okay, well, we'll upgrade her hotel room. And my husband simply said again, we respectfully declined. We're gonna, she's going to take this time mm -hmm. with her family. Yeah. Well, when the third call came and they said, what is it going to take to get Monique to France, to the Cannes Film Festival? And my husband said, is there a number associated with it? And they said, oh, we would never pay for anyone to do any promotions for a movie. And we said we understood because what people didn't know was I was paid $50,000 to do the movie Precious. And it really wasn't about the money and I'm not complaining because I signed up to do it with my friend. Yeah. But so you're, the movie you're saying that because you didn't have the money to do this on your own. Is that what you're saying? That you needed to well, feed your family and pay your bills? I think that's what America says. Yeah. I think we all say I can't do it for free. Right. So when the movie studio says we can't set a precedence and pay you to do this, we didn't have an issue with them. Okay. But that's when the reports came that now Monique is being demanding and she's being difficult. They had a request. We simply had a request. And we, they said they couldn't do it. And we said we understood. That was it. So Monique goes head up against the three-headed monster, okay, of Oprah, Tyler Perry, and Lee Daniels, right? She went against every, and everybody was against her. No one stood with Monique. Let me make that very clear. All five of the black women that showed up to do an episode about this very situation on The Real, y'all remember that show, that daytime talk show that's no longer in syndication? They left her out there in the middle of the ocean on a raft by herself. Now, Monique and Lee Daniels would ultimately go on to settle their differences later and sort of mend the broken fences between them in the years that followed. But during that block of time that Monique was out there stranded in the ocean by herself, making these claims about being underpaid because she did the movie for a friend. And then I tell you all the time, by the way, I tell you all the time, you need to vet the people that are in your circle, in your close circle. You need to make sure they're solid because Monique said that she did this for 
$3,000 to do Precious. That's how much she got paid. A movie that grossed over $63 million. Now, if it was me and my friend, and he did me a solid, or she did me a solid and gave me a stellar Oscar-worthy performance as a solid for me, then you best believe I'm doubling back once the checks come in and once I find out that we grossed over $63 million because that's just how I am. I'm doubling back to make sure my friend gets fairly compensated. Damn what the contract said, because that's my friend who did me a solid. But maybe that's just me. I understand that a lot of people who call people their friends are built different, right? So the film is a mega success. Yet the film's main star has gripes with how she was treated as a black woman who clearly killed the role and made millions of dollars in the process. Now, this sounds eerily familiar, right? That sounds awfully like the same fight and struggle Taraji says she's going through right now. Yet when Monique said the same thing about unequal pay and treatment as a black actress in Hollywood, she stood on that hill alone. There was no Gabrielle Union or Kiki Palmer to be found anywhere. They left her out there to die on that hill alone. Their inaction made her look crazy, in fact. Their unwillingness to support her and stand in the line of fire for fear of potential backlash from people that they liked speaks volumes to me, especially now, when all of a sudden the problem is on your doorstep. And only now do you want to be vocal about it. All you people that jumped into my comments telling me how I need to support the message where in the fuck was this energy when Monique was on an island by herself? Taraji was nowhere to be found. Gabrielle Union, nowhere to be found. Kiki Palmer, nowhere to be found. All y'all favorites, nowhere to be found. Taraji had already been in the Hollywood film industry for over a decade, yet she was silent when Monique was the one speaking out on the black woman's pay disparity. So what's the connection with all this? <clears throat> well, turns out, Lee Daniels is the same man who executive produced the hit show Empire. That's right, Cookie Lion, AKA Taraji P. Henson, was hand selected by Daniels 30 seconds into her audition, where she will go on to make $175,000 per episode. Gabrielle Union, Another person who's had industry ties to Lee Daniels through the Broadway production of Ain't No Mo. You see how different the energy is when it's somebody you personally have ties to that's being brought up in, in questionable business practices? You see how quiet these streets are and how quiet these brave women are when it's somebody they like being accused of appropriating the very same things that they're accusing Hollywood of right now today? Where was the outrage back then? Where was the coalition back then? You got Gabrielle Union skipping around her fucking backyard that's bigger than most of y'all's entire families, backyards and houses put together. Cheerleading Taraji's tears, talking about how she also has been treated unfairly. Again, this is coming from someone who has a net worth of over $40 million, Gabrielle Union. Now here's the kicker, here's the kicker. Are you ready? You ready for it? I'm gonna tell you why this entire movement is just fraudulent and fake as hell in my eyes. Because when Monique was going through the very same struggle that Taraji P and Gabrielle Union are advocating for now, there was no one, it wasn't even a black woman that came to Monique's aid and defense when she was basically blackballed in Hollywood by three of the most powerful black people ever. Not Oprah, not Taraji, not Gabrielle Union, not Kiki Palmer. All women who have decades of experience and notoriety in the industry. You know who it was that came to Monique's aid? You know who it was that gave a damn? A black man. Curtis Jackson, most of you know him as 50 Cent. He was the one to extend an olive branch and say, hey, listen, I recognize your greatness. I'll work with you. In fact, 
we'd love to have, we'd be glad to have you over here. Come on. I'll make sure we put you back into the public eye. I'll make sure that people are reminded of your greatness and of your talent. And I'll make sure that you're paid your worth and properly compensated for it. A black man did that. That's why it's very strange to me that you all who were fake mad at me about my thoughts on this whole Taraji situation will show up to the comment section of my video and try to tell me how I need to be in support and show support, but you all don't expect the same effort and accountability from the very black women that were actually in position to support Monique and make change? And that's why it's all bullshit. Y'all be all cap in the comments, and I have no problem reminding you of your own hypocrisy. So now, let's put it all together. When the opportunity arose for Taraji to work with Lee Daniels as the lead star of Empire in 2015, she could have turned it down. She could have said, you know what? I saw the way you did my black sister. I see how you did her dirty and severely and severely underpaid her for her role in your movie that earned millions of dollars and everything that she did for you. I see how you did her. And as a result, I am standing in solidarity with my fellow black sister actress. Thank you, but no thank you. You have to find someone else for the job. But that's not what Taraji did, is it? <clears throat> Instead, Taraji said, where do I sign, boss? <laughs> now, Derek, what are you saying? <clears throat> are you saying that she should have passed up on the bag and opportunity of a lifetime? No, I'm not. Honestly, not at all. Not at all. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is don't turn a blind eye to your sister's plight because it better suits your own selfish goals to then pop out later, pushing the same narrative and fight that your sister tried to take up when you left her stranded on an island alone, when she was in the very same space and spot that you are right now, only now. When the problem has impacted you directly, do you want to talk about having this, the discourse and broaching the conversation in some half-assed attempt to say that this is all for those that will follow you? But when it was your older sister taking up arms and attempting to trailblaze away for you and your colleagues by having the same discourse and discussion, you were nowhere to be found. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why this narrative is nothing but selfish hypocrisy at its finest. And that is when I have to call it for what it is. And let this be a lesson to remember for everyone that oftentimes your inaction ends up being louder than your reaction. What's that? Later. Come and climb aboard. Everything is worse when we leave with the sword. I can only judge by your heart what your mouth say. With a grain of salt, I'ma take it for your mouth say. Niggas follow greed, ain't no seeds being planted. These people never learn till they feed in the planet. Sleeping six feet, death is creeping at your doorstep. This feast is far from over. Have a seat, don't you toast?